sum up the the idea of what I would like to discuss and we will discuss all the things I mentioned but I want everyone to get involved and if you don't care about some of that stuff I mentioned ask me your systems questions I, I'm ready to deal with it so uh, present next a bit about me how I found my way here bouncing off of life haphazardly mm. I love this diagram. South Park is genius. If you don't appreciate it, let me explain. There were underpants gnomes that collected underpants, and they knew phase three was profit, but they didn't know phase two. So I think we can parallel this to a lot of life and work. Um, so, so let's just go through the phases of how I got here. Um, learned a bunch of programming a long time ago by accident via a bunch of outdated languages. I found a Turbo Pascal logo there, so that might date me a bit. Um, not a bad language. Phase two, get introduced to Drupal by Tyler Frankenstein, who presented earlier today. He was quite gracious to get me involved. Uh, Phase three, use those things to get involved in hosting and systems administration. And on to phase infinity. What I'll probably be doing for the rest of my life is put it all together to understand the bigger picture and help teach and explain it to others. So let's take a look at how I can possibly help you. You know, there's computers and stuff happens and you got a Drupal site. So, <laughs> on to helping you fill in your phase two. I thought a lot this week about just as I went about my work, what, what I was doing, how, how I could present it in an interesting way. So, here's a few things that came up. You've probably all been involved in migrating sites. Um, and one thing that's a great thing to do, if you're wanting to test a site pre-DNS, real simple little system-y trick, if, if you're in the, your terminal here on your local machine, hmm, you're not gonna, there we go. You can just, uh, if, if you're not familiar, common text editor in Linux is Vim. That'll allow you to edit and look at any file. Forgive me if I'm covering things you know. I just want to cover all the bases for everyone. So a big problem is you, you have this site. You, maybe you're on cPanel or Plesk, and you just click a button, and everything's ready on that server to begin serving this site but you don't want your DNS to point to it yet because of there's still a live site at the old location. So a beautiful little trick that I showed some people this week and you know I use all the time is to just uh, vim your Etsy hosts. Oh and as I'm on this thing I'll to edit it I'd have to sudo um, but in this file, you can put an IP and any domain and your local machine, your browser will just ignore DNS and say, Hey, look for this site at this IP. So say I wanted to pretend like the digital masters had fallen and I was about to host google.com. I could go ahead and point that to a matrix IP, google.com, and here in my own laptop, every time I hit google.com, it would 
point to my servers and just I could pretend and it would be great. Um, but that's, that's the scope of it. It's only to yourself. But you have to understand how this is a great tool for testing pre-migration. I'm sure you've all probably dealt with the, uh, the annoyance of trying to use the tilde Apache, or the Unix username. And there's just a lot of downfalls to that. And with this, if I was to just um, go down here and, you know, as I said, put like a matrix IP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's try that pseudo. I should have probably set up an example, but that again would be preparation. Um, yeah, it's hard looking over here. So you know, I I know some matrix IPs. I, I could have set up all the vhosts to do that little Google example, but I think everyone in the room probably gets what I'm saying. It'll just look to that server. And if the server is prepared with everything other than the DNS, you know, your common vhosts, things like that, it will work as it will once the DNS is pointed there. A great way to test your site pre-migration. Um, so that's something I'd advise everyone to check out. Uh, you'll probably have to do that at some point, try to test a site before the DNS is pointed there. Um, mass updating. Say you're a shop like ours where you have a lot of just sort of cookie cutter WordPress shops. Um, maybe you do the same thing with Drupal. You roll them out all the time. They're pretty basic. So what we kind of do to tackle the problem of how do you go through and keep all these sites updated. Um, I, I admit that these scenarios don't work for everyone, but um, let me get out of here. so much harder to type when you're in front of an audience. I don't, I don't know what that phenomenon's about. Um, so say you have like a massive site list, just a plain old text file where you have your domain and whatever information, most likely a doc root on your system where that file structure exists. You know, you obviously don't want to keep this site list somewhere publicly available. I'm sure you, you all understand that. But um, once you have a tool like that, just kind of a basic tool that you can parse with things I'd advise you to check out, uh, SAR, awk. I'm going to review what I talked about and put in some examples on, on the site after this. It's kind of easier than preparing it ahead of time. Um, so you can take this text file and with simple scripting, Drush, and Cron, which, um, let's take a look. Uh, my servers specifically have kind of an interesting thing where there's just one kind of running all the Cron jobs, but let's just go to a random server, Mario. It's an Apache. Uh, physical server. Not really relevant, but I just use it for things. All our servers are Nintendo character names. So that's one of the great things of being a sysadmin. You get a fun naming convention for your servers. So, you know, you're anywhere on this server. SSH in, add the command prompt. Is anyone familiar with, you probably know your Drupal cron jobs, but your, your uh, Unix cron jobs, you can, you can edit this file. It'll automatically go to nano, which I'm not really a fan of, I like Vim, but you can just say, eh, I'm root right now, just uh, cron, and there won't be anything here, but cron dab dash E. Uh, 
Uh oh, that's no good. All right, hey, we've got a real problem to deal with. This has been happening. We just did some of those mass WordPress updates I had talked about, and we've been battling log files filling on these Apache heads. So let's just deal with this right now, right? That's how my job works. You find something and you just kind of deal with it. This, of course, will only be applicable if you have root access, something to that nature. We'll cover some more user stuff that would be a little friendlier to you designers in a second. But one thing people brought up is logging and how do I take a look, parse logs, things like that. Um, first of all, we can get just kind of a general idea of what we're looking at. And you see slash is 100% full. That's not good. Eh, it can happen to an Apache server and it'll still kind of chug along. However, I'm sure you've all ran into the instance where, or maybe not, if, if this was your MySQL server, or if all your services were hosted on the same server, and the drive fills, MySQL is just going to stop doing things. So, you might have Nagios in place, and I'm sure mine was warning me about this. It's been warning me about a lot of this, but until we either turn off logging or clear up the logs, this is going to continue to happen. But, how do we know where this space is being filled? Uh, we can do navigate, uh, navigate to slash, just to get a general idea. Then we can do a du dash h max equal one. And that'll kind of give you a rundown of all these locations. It might take a while and you can make it really complicated and sort it by size, but that's gonna be a huge command to copy paste in. Uh, but this will kind of break down where in all these base directories stuff is being filled. And in a moment, we're going to see, I'll just cut to the chase, this is all, all in var. It's gonna be all logs. Our logs are just filling rapidly. So, we can clear them out. Mine get exported to places, um, but you might wanna parse these or take a look at them. Um, So we'll just navigate to var. We could run the same command there if we're unsure. We're still trying to figure this out. But hey, you run that, you're going to see it's, it's all in var log, which in, in most uh, Linux systems is where you're going to find most of your logging, things like that. So let's take a look. Um, one thing. Uh, you can save yourself a lot of time to look and list directories. I prefer ls-la. I just, I don't know, I like the way it looks. And you can alias that. I'll, I'll put something up on aliasing, but I, I used to have one just ll would do this. You can basically create your own commands through aliasing. But um, yeah, look at all these logs, all these, uh, gzip logs just taking up space so i just want to clear some of this stuff out i i know what's causing it it's the wordpress updates just spitting out tons of warnings things like that and i want my designers to be able to deal with that so i'm gonna say something like a dangerous command you don't want to press enter on it too soon you might in fact want to fill in the second part first but we could say star dot gzip Ooh. and if we look at that again it's uh we got rid of them all star is just kind of the wild card from command line um, but it's still, we're probably still not okay. Yeah, see that barely, barely did anything. So let's go ahead and try removing, uh, some of the rollover logs. Like start on one. That's taken time, so it may have done more. But one thing you might run into with this 
is df dot h might not give you accurate information once you've removed the, the logs. And this can sometimes be because of services hanging on to the files, they're, they're locked. Um, you can sometimes get around that with restarting services, but eh, you can track this down with a command I got to use the other day that I hadn't used in a long time. Um, mm. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. That's horrible. Drawing a blank in front of everyone. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, it didn't happen in our case. This is just a simple little problem. We dealt with it quick. But let's take a look at something as a user. Say, we, say we've got a Drupal site. Um, This is, this is just a plain old fresh install of Drupal. There are a couple things. You'll see the common readout of the permissions. Then you'll see the user, the group, and timestamp sizes. Eh, not as helpful, but this gets confusing to a lot of people. Um, and when you go from system to system, you, you're probably going to run into issues with this. You have to configure your Drupal site right away with different permissions on different directories. It doesn't come out of the box for most systems configured to allow file uploads, things of that nature. On, on our systems, the Apache user is www.data. On yours, it might be user nobody. It's basically the same thing. Apache, just like a Unix user, needs to have the permissions to whatever it needs. Read, write, execute things. So for most of our files here, um, yeah, I can't walk over here. You can see that a pretty common thing would be to have the Unix user having read and write with the Apache user having read, because most of the time, Apache just needs to read things and give it to the user. But, yeah, you, you know, you might, uh, through FTP or SSH, be logged in as this user. For most of you developers, that's your common scenario. And, yeah, for me, we can just uh, switch to our, our little dev thing here. Uh, switch, you can, SU, switch user. They usually stand for something reasonable. So let's, uh, let's switch to dev test. Just so that we can pretend we are the dev user and we don't have root access. We don't want root access. We want to cover ourselves. But this <laughs> might create some complications. We can still navigate around. Well, let's take a look at a common place where you might have trouble. Mm. Let's actually start here. So you usually have to modify this, change it, or the site will complain and not install. Well, let's look at what some working stuff is. That's a little over permissioned. I probably did that hastily. Um, but uh, you'd want your settings to be set back to, we just set this up the other day for the developers. I, I, I don't want this. This is, this is dangerous right here, having, having this, because what this means is both this Unix user and the Apache user have, have the full, full rights to it. And um, so a lot of this stuff that you could do, you can do it complicated ways, uh, probably some UI in your FTP, things like that, but there's two basic ways to think about this. Um, the command is going to be chmod, and um, nah, I can't really think of human words for that. I guess it just <laughs> kind of parallels um, 
Chon, which would be changing ownership of something. You'd do that more as Rook, but yeah, you could still do this. Say you just wanted to, you know, oftentimes for WordPress, uh, people just want to do everything from the back end. And that's going to require Apache to have some permissions. And eh, a cheap way to do that, if you're willing to sacrifice FTP, might be to, we'll just play with our settings file and break the site. But you could, I believe, as, as dev test, um, change it to www data. And um, that's going to... Uh, that's going to give those kind of abilities, abilities to read and write, or you could just, you know, play around. And a lot of this is based on your, your PHP handler. Uh, there's, there's four basic PHP handlers that um, it's not really the job of the developer to know about that. But it's important to understand. We could probably pull up a great little chart that can explain it better than me. Most of you are probably operating under DSO. Mm, and they don't have names that make sense. But I can explain a little bit about them. Mm, so I'd like everyone to start thinking about the last time they were SSH in as a user. What kind of obstacles did you run into? Because I, I could just sit here and talk about random stuff all day. I don't know what's applicable to you. I had a big list and I don't want to fall into that pitfall of just knowing about things and not being able to teach it. Like, I'm not really good. I'm not really good at Drupal. I'm not really good at systems, but like I know both and uh, wide range. Tyler, what, what were Well, as a Drupal developer, you're fortunate that you've got that Drupal log, but um, the, the thing you would commonly do um, if you have access to like a local PHP any, which uh, that would be another thing that kind of goes back to PHP handlers, but we'll not even touch on that. You can, in that PHP any, you could ask your server admin if you can get one or if you could add something to the server wide one where you can flag PHP error reporting. Because, yeah, white screens of death are terrible. They don't tell us anything. Empty source, nothing there to see. But if you do change that, and there are a lot of flags where you can enable the log to write warnings or actual errors, things like that. Again, just uh, Google's our friend. Skynet can teach you a lot about the servers. And... We'll just, uh, we'll just do a quick, uh, RPHP values. It's going to be something like this where we can see. So, PHP any is you, you're probably more familiar with your PHP info file. It's essentially all the same values. You're just reading from the site in your PHP info file um, the, the basic values that you define there. Like say you're getting a ah, fatal lack of memory or you can bump it up, um, I, you know, things like that in PHP any allow the site more. You may have had to do that with Drush. You may have had to allow Drush to be able to use more memory um, on your systems for it to do the things it needs to do. Um, but one of the great things we can do here is the error reporting. We can tell it where to log the errors 
um, as PHP runs under Apache, it will be owned by your Unix user, therefore as a developer giving you access to that log. Um, um, so you want to... So we talked about levels, uh, strict, E all, E depreciated. So these all is all inclusive, of course. Um, and these are just different levels of where you would see these errors, um, what gets written to the log. It also has options for actually printing that uh, to the page. Uh, it's probably got that somewhere in here, but it's a thing. Um, so, yeah, if you or your systems guy or your hosting, whoever, wants to configure that, that can help you. It won't always get around the white screen of death, especially if you're trying to print everything to the page, but it is just a text log then that can be parsed. So maybe I think that was one of the things you had mentioned too, Tyler, is just kind of looking at logs. If I know something just happened, one of my favorite commands, like people like head and things like that, I like a, a tail on the log. I think that's a, a fun command because we can do it two different ways. Um, so we're going to do some root stuff, but... Uh, it, it would be applicable to the way you could parse these. So say I just saw an error, so I know it's pretty recent. It's maybe on a dev site, so there's not much writing to that log. You could do like a, a tail of a 100 or a 1,000, what, whatever. Um, so we'll just say Oh, did we fail again? Oh, ha, we're still the user. Oh, here's a good one. Say I was, uh, I was that user. I was dev test, but it can get confusing if you, if you don't really know what you are. This is a great one. Who am I? That's, that's a fun one. <laughs> All right, so that would have told me that I was still dev test, not root, therefore not giving me the ability to access the log I was trying to access. So let's try again as root. So that's going to give me whatever, the dash, uh, how many, how many I want to see. Say we want to see it happen in real time, a uh, fun one, or you know, it's, you want to watch things as they come up. Tail dash f a log that will uh, follow it as it goes. So let's just do the same thing. Tail dash f it. That's that's a little more real time if you have an application for that. Hopefully we'll see it doing some things. Yeah, we could. Mm -mm -mm. So that, that'll give you, I believe, by default, the first 10, or the last 10, I should say, and then everything that's created as it goes along. <sighs> um, but say you're looking for something specific, like um, you want to find... Uh, yeah, you want to use grep. Uh, that's what I would say. You want to grep for a certain site and just get the entries for that. Um, you can just do uh, grep. And... and mine are pretty parsed down, so... It might be tricky, but, um, and we'll just say the same log. See if we add some errors. See if we're getting regular old Apache errors. 
oftentimes a lot of what you're looking for will be in a similar log called the access log. All that's not very relevant to a Unix user. That's all kind of root stuff, but you can apply that to the logs we're speaking of, PHP logs. Um, and tab completes your friend. That's one thing you gotta learn right away. Um, yeah, that'll get you around the command line. Um, so let's say instead of the error log specifically, we're, we're just going to say all the Apache logs. So let's just see everything michigandrupal.com in all the Apache logs, whether they be access or, you know, so it might look for a while. I don't, I don't know if it'll even find any. I could have brought you to mail, as uh, some of you know that. I was kind of an issue with this recently. Um, but it'll take a while to look for that. And, you know, it's going through a lot of logs. Mario's not that strong, despite, uh, you know, his character name. So, let's apply this to something other than logs, though. Say you're looking for files, files, you lost some image files or something of that nature. Um, so we're, we're at our site base root. Here's our site. I want to say, man, I have no clue where this developer or anyone put this file. Um, <laughs> there's not going to be anything here, so it won't find it, but um, you can grep for things recursively. Recursively just means go through all the directories, look inside all of them and all of them and so on and so forth till you get to the end. And there's, there's two flags for this. Uh, one is lower R and one is upper R and it just has to do with symlinky stuff. Um, but we can, we can do a grep dash r uh, dot slash which just means current location um, we know it'll find a settings on PHP. Mm, oh I did it backwards sorry yeah you see this is the thing if you're not doing destructive commands you can just screw up and it'll tell you what to do and you go oh yeah I did that wrong yeah but you know, oops again and you can break out of any command as I just did with control C when you realize oh, we don't want that to run forever uh, so let's try this correctly so <laughs> that's gonna look in each file at the code this is good if, if you're writing a lot of code and you want to find any instance of some mention of settings PHP and it's gonna break down to you uh, the file, the directory in reference to what you gave it, which for me was just here, uh, and mine show a nice, you know, where we are, but, um, it will be a file location in reference to the command you gave it, and it will print out the line it found it on. So this, in this blank Drupal install, it just gave us even comments every place that that exact string is mentioned within the whole site directory. So they offer tools for this, like WinGrep and stuff like that, but this is all built right into Linux, these beautiful tools. And once you start combining them and things like that, it becomes very powerful. Combining commands can be interesting. There's a command called find. Find finds things. Um, what would be a fun thing to find? If you want it based on, if you don't want it to take long, there's also locate, but that's kind of built on a database of your stuff. But I, it, it's fast. You could say locate on uh, settings, not PHP, and this will be server wide. That. Yeah. Mm. Oh, should have plugged in the computer. That's a <laughs> bummer. All right, this is a great time to start. I'll explain what I was talking about, but 
there's there's piping. You can take two commands. What I was about to show you was a find, where we say like find all the directories, and that's just a dash d um, for directory name something like this, and then you can pipe it and say so all those you found now do this to it. So you could find all of a like name directory, and by pipe I mean just the straight up and down symbol, and then you could say ch chmod recursively, because you can add that recursive flag to that command as well. It's always gonna be a capital R in there. Um, so you could find all the, all the directories you're looking for, and then with the pipe command, take action in one line. And this becomes really powerful once you start scripting or like the cron jobs I said, where you can have that run at a time interval. Yes? For the question about the find command, uh, I'll be confused as to when uh, the two concepts for the find command is the return to execute a pipe, and that is the, the concept of the XRs. XRs, great the command. Exec, the exec parameter of pipe. And I'm never sure what's the right approach to use for, for XRs. Hmm. Especially when you're talking about schmod. Uh, right. Well, that example, you would, you would use a pipe XRs because it's saying to the result of your find, you want to take that result and execute this command to it. So that's kind of the way to think about it. If you just look at your base find, you're going to see that it's just a bunch of directors. Like, this is one I commonly do, um, you know, uh, like, like the file upload location we were looking at. If I wanted to go across all my systems, find all those directories um, that need more lax permissions to be able to upload to, for example, you could find all those with the find command and then xargs is saying, here, you know, here's this result. This is your argument in the next command. So you kind of have to think about it a little backwards in that regards, I guess. But um, maybe the best way would be to compare it to something that is not that way. Like if you were to do an ls-la, just list your directory structure, you could add a pipe and grep that. You, you don't need the XRs because grep is just taking your result set and grepping it. Um, you know, it's kind of like I said, none of those are just, if you're not doing anything destructive, test. A great little way to test your command is to just, you know, uh, you can pipe things to a log file first, parse your log file. You can use echo to just kind of tell you what would happen, things of that nature. I mean, the rabbit hole is very deep. That's, that's why I really couldn't decide what I should try to present to you and was hoping you guys would have questions that we could cover. Tyler, um, what was your original question? Let's focus on that and then we'll come back to this. How much time do I have? Like eight minutes? Oh yeah, we can cover this. Well, I guess for example, uh, it's hard to see now, but I was gonna suggest uh, since uh, Zach's department is actually hosting the website that powers this camp, uh, it would be interesting just to see what's in it. It's a very large letter in that case. Well, it gets more complicated when you get into uh, complicated multi-server setups because, you know, a lot of you are used to working on a single box where everything exists on there, MySQL, Apache, and, you know, there's just one, one of each thing all in one box. Uh, but unfortunately, with what the site's running off of now, there's about eight Apaches being proxied to, to serve that. So you run into the inherent problem of 
these logs are going to exist across multiple servers. Um, I, I could show you some things. I had to look through the mail logs trying to figure that out. And, oh, email's a part of sysadmining. You don't want any part of it. It's one of my least favorite things. But um, the best way to do that would be, you know, we take all our logs and then just kind of put them in one place. And then you can just grep star all those logs in one place. Um, And he specified the exact parameter and the command like chmod, and then you can, you can do it that way. I'm not sure what's the best way to do it. Is it better to do XRs? I, I've, heard, I've read arguments one way or the other, but I'm still not sure if there's you know, the best way to do it. Uh, sometimes I usually do like R6 a lot. Ooh, yeah. There's a lot of different flags with R things that you can use to say you're migrating from one location to another and your Unix user is going to be the same. Uh, you can give it flags to reserve permissions to only update things that are different, that have changed. Um, for you coders, uh, a diff is a very um, simple little command you can run where you have one file and you want to see the differences to another file. It's just diff file one, file two. It's kind of hard to read when you first look at it, but you've seen those patch things where um, it has the pluses and minuses. It's a similar printout, and you can compare two files that way. And then with you know the piping and everything we're talking about, you can then parse that down as well to really get the information you're looking for. It's hard, you guys, to force yourself to get into some of this stuff to break away from the GUI. But I hope you can see, once you learn a couple of these commands and start putting them together, it's fast. It's, it's, uh, it's just more reliable, more simple than using tools like that. And um, I guess that example I wanted to say with Drush, where you have a lot of cookie cutter sites, Tyler said in his talk, uh, one thing that's necessary when you start scripting with that is just the simple dash y flag. You can almost always at command line do things like that to automate. The dash y says yes, accept this. So when I enable something, I just do drush enable dash y and it'll print out, do you want to download this? Yes. Do you want to blah? Yes. So, you know, um, and then, you know, if you're getting into your cron job, say you want to do this. Um, you know, if the cron timing's crazy, just look it up. It's pretty simple to understand. Uh, but um, then on that time schedule, you can say, say we just, <laughs> we're putting caution to the wind and we're fully updating our sites every night no matter what. It'd be as simple as just a script that says drush update or you know whatever you want to update um, and then putting a cron job in saying run this script at this timing and say your script just does something with drush drush update everything and you put the dash y in there because the the, the script the machine it would just hang there forever waiting for user input. And uh, you know anything like that, you can usually get around it with a flag. Um, flags are the power to all these commands. Grep has a ton of great flags. Say instead of finding something, I want everything that doesn't have something. There's a flag for that. You just gotta, you just gotta dive in there and be fearless. Especially if you don't have root access, it'll stop you.
it'll stop you from doing the things you're afraid to do. Um, so we're running out of time. Um, as far as that uh, question about you know piping and exarchs, things like that, um, just find out what works. Figure out ways to test and um, just run commands, echo, pipe it to a log file. Um, before you run a giant find pipe to rm-rf, I'd print it to a log file first. Make sure you're about to dangerously remove everything that you want to and not extra things. Review that and it becomes very simple. Putting everything from your command into a log file, like say you want to do a giant find before you add the destructive remove command, is just a you know, little greater than symbol, text file name. Bam, creates a text file for you. Well, that's about all the time we have. Um, I, I'd love if, if anyone has any specific questions please come up to me today. Like I said, I'm not really good at any of this stuff, but I kind of understand the phase two. I get all the parts in between because I've seen a little bit of all of it. And um, I really feel like that's valuable. Uh, if, if you're just a, a designer, a developer, something like that, um, you can get better understanding some of this stuff understanding how Apache and DNS work with your site, what it, how the pieces of the puzzle fit together. And it's, that's why I called it Phase Infinity. It's, it's a never-ending game. I'll be learning about this stuff all my life and not getting bored. So <laughs> that's why I like my work, I guess. It, it's exciting. Um, and I just encourage you to just Google like crazy. People love to write about computers on computers. There's nothing that you can't find more on the internet than computers. That's how I do my job. I don't know answers. I'm just really good at finding them. And that's how you tackle command line, things like that. It's out there. Um, you just got to take ideas from different places, blindly smash them together, see if it works. <laughs> It's worked for me. I don't know. Somehow I'm doing okay. So that's, I guess that's the advice I'll leave you with. The haphazard uh, lifestyle advice of Zach Schlemmer. Thank you for your time, you guys.